It's the book club for kids. It's the book club for kids. It's the book club for kids podcast. Hi, I'm Kitty Feldy. How does a little kid turn into a gangster? Meet 11-year-old Yummy. Yummy belonged to a gang called the Black Disciples. They ran the neighborhood. Even kids just playing in the streets, minding their own business, they get caught up in gang business. That's our celebrity reader, actress Ariel Richardson. Our readers from Charles Hart Middle School in Washington, D.C., offer their own solutions to gang violence. What I really think they should do is just have their parents or someone that he really connects with talk to them. Writer G. Neary says his biggest challenge was the story itself. How do you turn something so tragic into something positive? This is the Book Club for Kids, the show where kids talk about books. We'll tell you how you can be on the show a little later on, but first, let's meet our readers. Hi, my name is Jaden. My name is Kareem. My name is Christian. We are all 6th, 7th, and 8th graders from Charles High Middle School in Washington, D.C. Yummy is about a kid who is troubled. He gets himself into an accident. We accidentally shoot somebody. But he has to hide from the police. But he has. But at the end, is a huge shock towards it. Roger is the person who tells the main story about Yummy. Well, let's describe Roger and let's describe Yummy. How are they the same? How are they different? Roger, he's more likely like a soft kind towards his family members, and Yummy, he's like a very violent young man who's been going through a lot of stuff in his home and takes it out on many other people. So tell me more about Yummy. He's too much into violence or like gang stuff and all that. And why? Why is he that way? He has home problems, so basically he don't get treated the way he's supposed to get treated. Now, Yummy's not an old guy, is he? No. He's 11 years old, but but Yummy's in a gang because he got into it. He was robbing cars, stealing from other people, and set people's cars on fire. The only way how he got away with it, because the way how he was raised is with his, I believe, his grandmother, and it's more than one kid, so it's hard for his grandmother to keep up with all the kids, so he's able to get away with many things. He can get locked up, but they choose not to, they let him go. And the times that he has been in like like jails for kids, he'd managed to break out, and he still do trouble things. Well, let's hear about Yummy from the kids who knew him best. Our celebrity reader is actress Ariel Richardson. I knew this kid named Yummy. His real name was Robert, but the kids in the neighborhood called him Yummy on account of he liked cookies and sweets so much. He was my age, 11 years old. He was just a little guy, what we call a shorty. Four feet tall and maybe 60 pounds heavy. Oh, but sometimes he sure didn't act like it. Yummy belonged to a gang called the Black Disciples. And anyone who was a rival on one of their streets was going to hear from the Black Disciples. They ran the neighborhood. Even kids just playing in the streets. Minding their own business could get caught up in gang business. Only, things didn't go so good. I seen Yummy's face all over the news. His name is Robert Sandifer. He is being sought out in the shooting death of a 14-year-old girl here in Roseland named Siobhan Dean. I know that girl. Everyone in the neighborhood did. I seen Siobhan around the neighborhood. She wanted to be a hairdresser. Oh, she was so pretty and did hair real nice. She lived on the block next to Yummy's. I think they used to know each other when they were little, but that was a long time ago. Now Siobhan was gone and Yummy was on the run. I was watching it on the news like some bad dream. Those fools on the TV don't know what they talking about. But my brother Gary did. The Black Disciples were his crew. Yummy shot. You don't know what went down. So shut up. I'm going out. It's your friends that got yummy into this mess, Gary. Whatever. 
Gary Wait. Slam. See that? Don't you end up like your brother. I'm not my brother. Slam. I knew Gary ran with Yummy's game, but he was still my brother. What does the author want us to think about this character? Because immediately, if you just describe him that way, we might just absolutely hate him. I think the author portrays him as a troubled boy, has a troubled background, but he goes in the gang to try to find himself. Well, I believe that the author is trying to describe him as we all understand that we could tell in the book that he's violent, but maybe some people might think that he might have a good heart inside and he's just like bully others because his life is going bad. Why do you think the author told the story this way rather than making, I mean, the story's about Yummy, but it's not told by Yummy, it's told by somebody else? I would say he made the story this way so he can, so he can really get people in their mindset and to to know Yummy's background, to know like what he does and how he does it. I believe that the author made the book like that to let others know that they should try not to choose violence and choose like happiness because the things that you do, it depends on your future. Does this work well as a graphic novel? I mean, how well would it work if the pictures weren't there to help tell the story? Maybe the characters might look fake. They might think they're fake without graphic novels. So you think the graphic novels make it more realistic then than if it was just in print? Why? It actually brings you into the book. Now, if you if you go to the first page, you can actually see the events that's happening and what he does and what he tries to do. What do we do with somebody like Yummy? I mean, if I was to make you, I don't know, chief of police, head of the courts, head of the school system, what could we do to try to help the yummies that are out there? If you, like, just try to put them in jail and you let them out, they're going to still do the same thing over and over unless somebody tries to actually help them instead of just giving them more pain in their life. How do we help him? To be honest, I really don't know, but what I really think they should do is just have their parents or someone that he really connects with talk to them. I think we should talk to him, make sure he feels welcome and calm, to also take him to therapy because all that built up trauma might make it hard for him to build it or be friends with somebody else. Think about it, mostly friends he need. Okay, so if, if I grew up like Yummy, if I had that kind of a family situation, or if you did, would we have turned out the same way? If I ended up like Yummy, I would at least try to stop myself from doing these things and try to calm down and maybe even try to talk to myself to convince myself that the things that I do, it will depend on how I will be when I grow older. I would at least try to talk to my friends or my teachers or a counselor in my school to help me with my problems. One of the statistics that was in the book was that 15 kids who are younger than 19 die every day in the United States. Do you remember that line? How did that affect you? What did it make you think about? Violence really isn't the key. These people who want to be gangsters and then when they try, they really fail and some of them end up injured, dead. And it made me feel sad that people do this to little kids who hasn't even grown full yet. I read a story this morning about, it was a shooting on Benning Road on the, in the metro transit area. And, you know, you have to think twice about, it. am I going to be in that situation at the wrong place at the wrong time? I mean, do you guys live with that thought that it could be scary for you out there every day? Yeah, I do. But I, anytime, like I walk home and walk to school by myself, I make sure I check my surroundings and everything. Like, there was this one shootout happened at the store down Holidays. I was told not to go down there, but I did not know what Holidays was. So when I realized I went past it, I got real scared because I was walking with my friends. So we all ran because we got scared because we saw people arguing and fighting. So we hurried up and ran away from that store. Are you scared every day or not really? Not really, but I'm also really scared for people, my friends, other people. Because I don't want one of them to be shot or hurt by anyone that's just a conflict or anything. Because I really do care for them because they like, want people I could talk to. 
So talk to me about why graphic novels work so well. It gives you a, visual, a visualization of what can actually happen. This is one of those books that's fiction, but it's based on fact. And um, that means that the writer has to make a decision about what they know to be true and then make up the rest. How do those books work for you? Do they make it seem more real? Is this a style you like? I like the way how the author made some fiction things in it. It put a lot of nonfiction things, as in I figured out that Roger is a fiction person who just helps tell the story and the details of what's going on in the background. Do you like that style? Yes, but I'm mostly it's nonfiction, especially about my kind of people, like African American people. Like it gives us a message of how, how it can happen and affect you in the real world, but it also tells you what's happening today and how kids are getting shot and killed and everything, and how struggles really happen. It puts me in a book. It makes me feel like I'm actually there watching like a movie, basically. So I'm actually there watching. So who would you recommend this book for? I would recommend the book for some preteen and teenage kids who might think of choosing violence. The people who do want to choose violence, they should read this book and realize that karma is real and they shouldn't do these things that they think they should do and just try to be do a better thing and have their future better. I would say to give these to kids who think about like turning to, like going to a game or something else is great, but it's really not to show them a different story. I would say it's for teenagers that try to act gangster, but they're you're really on the soft side. Do you guys have some questions for our writer? Why did you write the book? It actually started in a school, a middle school in Los Angeles. And I was doing these workshops. This was before I was a writer, even. And I was doing these workshops with uh, middle schoolers about storytelling. And uh, there was a gang war going on at the time. And so I felt this weight on the room. And people weren't really talking about anything. And the yummy story kind of happened in real time. Like it, it was in the news. You know, we kind of talked about it because it was related to what was going on there. I was at the school for a few days, and so every day there was a kind of update on the story, and then by the end of it was kind of the end of what happened to Yummy. And that really got everybody talking because everybody knew some kid like Yummy. Uh, everybody had been kind of affected by gangs in one way or the other. And so then all these stories started coming out and they were really personal and deep and meaningful. And so there was something so compelling about Yummy's story that just cut through anything. Uh, but that story actually turned me into a writer because I was not a writer of books at the time. I was a filmmaker. And it turned out that story wanted to be told as a book. Why did you choose to like make Yummy some gangster kid instead of like some school sweetheart or something and he could have just had made better decisions yeah well i mean again it was a true story and i was drawn to the true story and also the idea is like how do you turn something so tragic into something positive like does it just have to end there or can it be used, can that story be used somehow to bring light into the darkness? And so, you know, that was the key thing for me is it's so easy to write somebody off like yummy and to ignore them or to say, oh, I'm nothing like that. But, you know, I worked with a lot of kids who were in gangs in Los Angeles. And my experience almost completely was once you kind of took them out of that environment, they were really kind of the sweetest, most kind of wide-eyed, innocent kids you could imagine. At the end of the book, why did you make it shorter? It is kind of, I like a good open ending. I don't like to tie everything up in a nice bow and just give it to you and it's like, oh, that's done. I want the reader to kind of be left hanging because a story like this doesn't just have a nice, neat, happy ending. I mean, reality is messy. And 
things can go any number of ways after that. And so I like the reader to think about it and think about the different things that could happen next and where it might lead this character. Um, rather than me telling you everything and you don't really have to think about it. Okay, now I'm going to ask the hard question. You guys say it's not that hard, but everybody else does. Okay, then tell me the name of your favorite book and why you love it. I have a lot, but I'm like really into anime and animation. So my favorite book will be about anime, which is Demon Slayer. Like, I love the book, the way how the animation is made. And I'm just like into a lot of things like fighting because it's like fairy tales. And the way how the graphic is made, like comic books. And the book is mostly about people who just fights demons for their own protect and to protect their people. My favorite book is a, it's a manga too, but mine is One Piece because I actually like to read the story because actually Frank's like a kid who goes on an adventure, but he is a fruit that turns his body into rubber, but he's trying to become a pirate king, which is his lifelong dream. He's like like very strong. That kid is very strong. Like one time he picked up a bunny with his own hand, and that bunny was four times bigger than him. It was like I was just looking like, oh, my God, how did he do that? And you like it, how come? I like it because it gives, it gives us an adventure. It's like an adventure that you can read and see. It's like you there, but also not there at the same time. In other words, you're safe. You can watch the adventures, but not get hurt. Mm-hmm. Favorite book? I would say Harry Potter because it gives me wizard vibe. What about you, Jean Neary? What is your favorite book? There was a book called The Phantom Tollbooth. And that book really spoke to me because I'm a very visual person. You know, I started off as a visual artist. And so when I was growing up, I loved picture books because they were full of all these amazing illustrations. But, you know, you get older, the pictures get smaller, the text gets more. And then at one point, it's just all text. At that time, being faced with just those pages of text, I kind of like couldn't get into it. And so Phantom Tollboot did a couple of things. It had a lot of text, but it also had these amazing, whimsical, very funny, kind of outlandish illustrations by Jules Pfeiffer. And the story itself kind of broke all these rules to me. Like I thought a book had to be a certain kind of way. And this book seemed like kind of subversive, kind of dangerous, but like really funny. And really kind of crazy, like the way that my mind worked, you know, kind of this wild imagination. I had never seen that in a book before. And so it kind of made me realize, oh, like there's a lot of other things you could do with a book. It doesn't just have to be this boring old thing. Uh, So it kind of opened my eyes to all kinds of possibilities, you know. Ariel Richardson got a favorite book. Right now, my favorite book is All About Love by Bell Hooks. I recommend this book to everybody. It breaks down the definition of love, and I love it because it just really goes in depth into the different layers of love, receiving, giving, being, and so much more. And I just think it is a powerful book to read, to resonate with, and to sit with and meditate on, and then apply. We'll have a list of everybody's favorite book at our website, bookclubforkids.org. And if you have a favorite book, you can be on the Book Club for Kids podcast, too. Just ask your teacher, parent, or librarian to send us an email to kitty at bookclubforkids.org, and we will send them all the information. That email address is kitty at bookclubforkids.org. Thanks this week to producer Chad Francis. Brandon Baker composed our theme with additional music from Charles Nilman. Emma Steinkeller designed our logo. Thanks to our writer, Jean Neary, and our celebrity reader, Ariel Richardson. And thanks as well to our readers this week, Christian, Jaden, and Kareem, and their librarian, Kimberly Abel, from Charles Hart Middle School in Washington, D.C. We have a free newsletter for teachers, parents, and librarians full of free tips about how to turn kids into lifelong readers. You can sign up at our website, bookclubforkids.org. 
And by the way, the makers of Book Club for Kids have created a very different kind of podcast, a mystery series about a Washington, D.C. legend, the demon cat of Capitol Hill. It's called The Fina Mendoza Mysteries, and it's available now wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm Kitty Feldy. Thanks so much for listening.